Hello and welcome to Frost Over the World. Later in the program, when is torture torture? Then we've got the global economy, the Iranian elections, pop superstar Annie Lennox, and more besides. But first, Serbia. It's nearly a month since Kosovo declared independence from Serbia, a decision that has left Serbia in deep political crisis. On Thursday, Serbian President Boris Tadic was forced to dissolve parliament and call for fresh elections after the collapse of the governing coalition last week. Ministers failed to agree on whether to suspend ties with the European Union in protest at the recognition of Kosovan independence by some EU members. So what does all this mean for Serbia right in the, in the storm, the heart of the storm at this moment? Um, I'm joined now by Vuk Jeremic, who uh, is, of course, the foreign minister of Serbia, joining us right now from Belgrade. Welcome, Vuk. Good to have you with us again. Thank you very much indeed. It's my pleasure. Let me begin with the sort of question that people ask a lot, which is, but they only had parliamentary elections last January and presidential elections last month. Why does it have to be new elections? Well, I think there's been a lot of turbulence in the region politically and unfortunately physically a lot of turbulence since the uh, illegal and unilateral declaration of independence by the Kosovo authorities on February 17. Um, there is a vigorous political debate in Serbia right now as to uh, where to go from here. And I think that the people of Serbia are going to have a chance to decide as to uh, which is going to be the direction that the country is going to take from here on. Um, the elections are going to take place in May 11. It's going to be a watershed election. It is going to decide a lot uh, when it comes to the future, not just of Serbia, but of the entire Western Balkans. People of Serbia will have their say on May 11. And they will be voting essentially, would you say, on one of two policies, despite the setbacks in terms of people recognizing Kosovo to continue with the move towards the European Union, towards Europe, towards Western Europe, or the alternative to return to a, a sort of situation of isolation or isolationism in Serbia. Are those the two, would you say, the two main policy decisions between them? I think that there, are, uh, there are deep divisions in Serbia over uh, an array of issues, over economic policies, over social policies, um, perhaps most fundamentally about uh, whether or not Serbia should continue uh, its uh, path towards uh, becoming a full EU member. There's one thing that these elections are not going to be about, and this is about a Kosovo policy. I think that come what may, whoever wins on the parliamentary elections in May, uh, the policy of the Republic of Serbia towards our breakaway province of Kosovo is going to stay the same. Um, we have declared uh, this declaration of independence null and void, and uh, for us it has no legal or political meaning. Kosovo has stayed part of Serbia as far as the government in Belgrade is concerned, and I'm absolutely sure that this is going to continue being the policy even after the new government is created. I think that the most fundamental issue on which uh, the people of Serbia will will decide they're going to cast their vote on May 11 is uh, whether or not Serbia should continue together with other countries of the Western Balkans its integration towards EU um, beca eventually becoming a, a fully fledged member of the European Union. And would, would you be in favor of that? You're pu are you pushing for that yourself that to press on with that campaign? 100 percent, 100 percent, 100 percent. President Tadic has declared uh, very, very openly that Serbia is ready to continue its uh, EU integration. Um, we are not giving away on, uh, on, our, on our Kosovo policy. When it comes to protection of our sovereignty and territorial integrity, we stay firm. Uh, we continue to be opposed to this uh, unilaterally declared independence, this ethnically motivated independence from an internationally recognized state. We are going to, def uh, to continue defying this attempt at uh, breaking our domestic constitutional order together with international law. But when it comes to the future of Serbia in the European Union, when it comes to the future of the entire Western Balkans in the European Union, uh, President Boris Tadic is uh, unwavering, and I'm absolutely sure that the people of Serbia are going to confirm this point of view, the one that uh, they had the chance to say to give um, in the presidential election that uh, took place um, uh, well, just a little bit over a month ago, uh, that this path, the path of Serbia towards EU integration, is going to be confirmed by the people of Serbia in this watershed election that has taken place on May 11. And if 
the country is in favor of that move into the EU. You make a lot of progress with it. Um, but if, if in the end uh, the EU says that uh, it's a condi condition that Serbia recognizes the independence of Kosovo, uh, would, would that be a, a price that you could pay as a sacrifice to get into the EU? Well, uh, to be very honest, I don't see this coming because uh, uh, there are a number of countries inside the European Union who are very uh, strongly, uh, who are continuing to strongly oppose independence of Kosovo. There are a number of countries who haven't recognized Kosovo inside the European Union. There are a number of countries who are saying that they will never recognize Kosovo. So if uh, the members of the club are not asked uh, to recognize Kosovo, I can't see how a policy inside the European Union can be formulated. And um, as you know, David, uh, uh, there has to be a consensus when it comes to foreign policy decisions in the European Union. I fail to see how can this condition be materialized at all. Uh, nonetheless, uh, theoretically speaking, if it is um, uh, pushed, if it is uh, presented to Serbia, uh, this choice, uh, the choice of Serbia is going to be no. We are not going to give up our sovereignty and territorial integrity. There are no democratic countries in the world. There are no internationally recognized countries uh, in the world who are being asked to give up uh, sovereignty and territorial integrity. Serbia is not going to give up uh, its quest to preserve its sovereignty and territorial integrity. But uh, fortunately, uh, we do not expect uh, to be... Uh, to be presented uh, with uh, such an indecent proposal. Thank you on that one. The, now, earlier this week you said, and I, I quote here, that you would employ all legal, diplomatic, and political means at your disposal to deal with Kosovo. Uh, what did you mean by that? Uh, legal, diplomatic, and political means. What is Serbia going to do? It's going to stand firm on this point. You've just said it would not recognize Kosovo. Will you do anything else to that, further your policy? That's, that's the first. This is, uh, this is the fundamental premise. This is the fundamental point of view that we're not going to give up uh, when it comes to recognition. But Serbia uh, plans on being very vigilant in uh, international fora when it comes to Kosovo debate. Serbia is going to keep coming to the Security Council. Serbia will be working with the General Assembly of the United Nations. Serbia is going to be very active when it comes to bilateral relations. Uh, with all the countries of the Organization of the United Nations lobbying that this um, illegal act is not recognized uh, by a number of countries. Serbia is going to work very hard uh, so that it blocks any attempt uh, of uh, the so-called uh, Republic of Kosovo to join any of the international uh, organizations. So we plan on being very active, very vigilant, very engaged uh, in each and every international forum where uh, where this topic is going to be discussed. And we're going to make sure that it is discussed by each and every four to which we have access. And we have access to all of them as uh, internationally recognized democratic states, UN members, um, and, uh, and, and a country that is continuing to push for a peaceful political resolution of this complicated affair. And in the meantime, we have a situation. Some of the Serbs in the north of Kosovo said that they would like to uh, break away from the current Kosovo and join Serbia directly in that sense, not via Kosovo. Um, if they come to you for advice, would you advise them to break away from the current Kosovo? Well, we can't talk about breaking away from the current Kosovo because we're not recognizing the current Kosovo. For us, current Kosovo simply does not exist. Uh, the entire Kosovo is part of Serbia. Uh, and our constitution is uh, very, very clear in that one. So you can't really break away from an unentity. So um, <laughs> the full, I mean, there is, there is, there is a full territorial integrity um, of Serbia, which we are going to continue to respect. And each and every citizen of Serbia um, is going to continue doing so, I'm sure. Vuk, thank you very much for joining us today. As clear thank as ever. Thank you very ever. much, David. It was my pleasure. Vuk Jeremic there, speaking for Serbia. In a minute, I'll be joined by top U.S. lawyer Alan Dershowitz, discussing not his latest criminal case, but torture. Don't go away.